In this video, we'll be finishing off our options menu by making it input friendly and stylizing it. The best part is you'll actually be able to apply this knowledge to pretty much any menu you create in the future. In future videos, we'll be moving on and making an enemy AI. I'll be showing off a super simplistic state machine so we can add a bunch of different states. Then we'll be moving on to a more complex and expandable state machine that I actually use in my uh, own primary projects for anything that requires multiple states. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. As always, if you need help, have any issues with the code, or just want to say hi, make sure to leave a comment. With that out of the way, let's move our editor and finish off our options menu. So we are going to start by making this input friendly. Uh, to do this, we're going to need to add a script to our settings tab container, the one that contains all of the tabs for all of our different settings menus. We can give this a class name of settings tab container. Helps if I uh, <laughs> type class name. Yep. And now we're going to need to grab the tab container here as an onready variable. To do that, drag. Uh, hold down control as you drop, and it will create an already for you. Then I'm going to typecast this as a tab container. There we go. Get us that IntelliSense. And we're going to want a signal for this as well. We're going to do a signal for exit underscore options underscore menu. Now, if you remember correctly with how, the, uh, how we set this up, our actual options menu here has an exit button attached to it. But that op uh, exit button is not part of our tab container. So we're going to need a way of uh, firing this button when we press a specific button. Now, we'll get into that in a second. I'm going to create uh, or give us access to the physics process function, although it doesn't really need to be the physics process. We can just use the normal process function. I'm going to write pass in there for now. And then we're going to create a, another function, func underscore, underscore, func change underscore tab. Now, this might be seen as a bit of a uh, unnecessary function, and it kind of is. I just like to build things out like this. This is going to take a parameter of tab, and it's going to be of type int, and it will be a void return type. And then inside of here, all you're going to call is tab underscore container so we're going to call our tab uh, our tab container and then we're going to use the uh, dot to access it and we're going to access the set underscore current underscore tab function now you'll notice i didn't get intellisense for setting the current tab i actually don't know why it doesn't like to give intellisense this is probably a good reason why but for now we don't really need to worry about that we're just going to put in the parameter tab inside of this as our necessary parameter with that function set up, we're going to set up one more, and this is going to handle all the inputs for our options menu. So we're going to write options underscore menu underscore inputs. We're going to give this a void return type, and we're going to need to check for a couple of actions here. Now, this really depends on how you set up your names and your kind of keybinds, what you plan on using for your like left and right arrow keys. You could use the pre-built UI left, UI right actions that they've set up for you, which is the left and right arrow key. You could use your normal move right, move left keys, which is, uh, in my case, A and D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write if input dot is underscore action underscore just pressed. So if we have just pressed the key, and this key will be move right. So we're going to start with move right. And then I'm going to write or just to make this a little bit, I guess, easier for different keybind layouts or just different layouts in general, because the UI keys never change, right? Or at least I never change them. So I'm now going to check the same thing, so then I'm going to go down to UI underscore right. So we now have UI right, cap that off with a colon. Now we need to check one more thing. We're going to need to check if our, so if our tab container dot current tab is greater than or equal to the tab container dot get underscore tab count. Then we're going to write minus one. So when it gets the tab count, it will return, if we have four tabs, it will return the number four. Now, the thing with this is with how the tabs actually count when we plan on using them, it counts from zero to your maximum amount. So it would actually be returning three. That's why we want to put this minus one in here. So now, if our current tab is greater than or equal to the maximum amount of tabs we currently have, we are going to want to call that change tab function 
and we're just going to pass in the int for zero because zero will then reset our tab, our current tab, back to the first tab we actually have. So in this case, if we are on accessibility and we press the right again, it will now go back to the graphics tab. So we've got that kind of looping through in one direction. Now, outside of that if loop, uh, actually, we're going to want to put a return in there to make sure nothing else happens. Now, outside of that if loop, inside of the original if loop, we're going to create a new variable. This new variable will be for next underscore tab. And we're going to set it equal to the tab underscore container dot current tab plus one. So that's going to take the current tab number. So if we are on, say, controls, this will be tab number one. And then it'll add one to it. And it will store that in a variable. So the next tab will be tab three or two in this case, which will be sound. So we once again want to call that change tab function we created. And then we just want to place in the next tab. Now, with that done, we're going to create another if loop. So we have this one set up and we have this one set up. Now we're going to make a new one from scratch and it's going to be for moving left. So if input dot is underscore action underscore I can't spell action apparently action just pressed we're going to want move left or UI underscore left so if either of those two are pressed we're kind of going to do the same loop right? we're going to write if tab container top current underscore tab or we're going to just go if the current tab is equal to zero so we don't need to get the uh, count here this is great for adding as many count or as many tabs as you possibly want to your menu we just need the starting tab in this case so tab zero the very first tab and if it is that we want to change tab to whatever our maximum tab is right now i could hard set this and set it equal to three which for now will probably work but if you want to always make sure you uh, get the very very end tab you can just go tab container dot get underscore tab count minus one kind of like we did up here because this is going to get the maximum tab and then set it to the last tab minus one which will count correctly for us now outside of this we're going to do another variable this variable is going to be for the previous underscore tab we're going to set this equal to tab container dot current tab negative one and then we're going to call that change tab functionality again and we're going to pass in the previous tab now finally outside of all those if loops we're going to do one more we're going to write if input dot is action just pressed and we're going to grab the ui cancel button we're going to grab the ui cancel button and what that's going to do the ui cancel button is uh, preset to escape so anytime we press escape inside of our options menu we want it to emit the exit options menu signal like so so this sets up most of our, well, this sets up all of our controls for our options menu. Now we just need to call this within the process function. So we'll just write options menu, input call, there we go, that's been called. Uh, hit control S to save, five, go into the game, options, go and give it a test and you'll notice that, let me make sure, there we go. Always have to check the controls if you're using uh, if you're using your move left and move right keys, make sure to make sure you check your controls and make sure they're uh, accurate or just use the arrow keys in this case. So that's those done. Now, every time we hit escape, we're emitting a signal, but the signal's not being connected anywhere. So let's go back to our options menu, the large options menu, the one that contains the uh, like margin container, the, the settings tab, the label, all of that stuff and the X button. We're going to go into the options menu we're going to grab a on ready variable for our settings tab container as setting tab container. And then we are going to write in the ready function settings tab container dot exit options menu dot connect. And we are going to connect this to the on underscore exit pressed function that we set up for just pressing the button. So what this is going to do is anytime we press escape, it's going to press that button or find this method and then do these things. In this case, it will exit the options menu, emit a signal to create a storage dictionary, which in this case saves all of our settings, and then it disables the options menu. So that means escape is now also hooked into our settings saving functionality. So let's go one more time, hit F5, go to options, 
have a quick scroll through. I'm going to change my move left, move right, and my jump keys. And then I'm going to hit escape, closed. Now I need to make sure that's saved, and it did. So now I'm going to change those back, hit escape one more time, make sure it's saved, and it's saved. So that's how we basically make our menus uh, input friendly, right? We can now uh, to kind of tab between them with the A and D keys. We can escape. You can apply this now to pretty much every other menu that you create or this kind of process to any other menu you create and make them input friendly. So if you want to design a game for controller use, you can do that. It all just depends on how you set up your input maps here. You'll see here, move left, move right, jump, set camera. Because of how I've set this up in the past, I could actually remove the UI uh, left and UI right, but it's a good idea to keep them just in case these change where the UI keys don't, those might. Now with that done, I'm now going to move into actually stylizing up our uh, things tab container and our options menu. I'm going to start with the exit button. The exit button is going to be relatively, actually no, we'll, we'll start with the uh, settings container. Easier if I do this uh, this way. So to do this, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to our settings tab container and keep it highlighted, go into the inspector, and we are going to want to scroll down to theme, theme overrides, and then you can go into style and you can grab these uh, style boxes here. So we're going to want one for the panel to start. The panel is this entire background section. We are going to want to create a new style box texture. Now we're going to need to give it a texture. Now I went and uh, designed a little texture inside of a sprite. It was uh, relatively simple. Dimensions are a little bit off, but once again, a lot of these settings are going to depend around how you uh, set up your borders, how you create your assets in kind of that sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this PNG over to the texture. You'll see it's a bit uh, stretched, a bit wrong, doesn't look right. Something kind of seemed off about this. And that is because if we go down to the texture margins, uh, you'll see what happens if we start changing these. Yeah, you'll see there is a button here in the subregion for editing a region. Now, if I click that button, you'll notice that I get this kind of weird, uh, these lines. This is for setting up what's known as a nine patch uh, texture. Nine patch texture will basically mean it will set something up or slice something up into nine different segments. You'll have the uh, three in the top, three in the middle, three in the bottom. That way you can kind of scale and stretch these as much and as little as you want to, and it will actually keep its dimensions uh, kind of how you want it to. Now I'm going to change this to pixel snap grid. It will snap our menu or our border back into the correct place. And now these little outlines here, I need to start moving. Now, if you pay attention just behind this box here, these start to change with it. So I want to set this one pixel off from the corner that I've drawn in both directions one pixel from the bottom corner, and one pixel in the top corner. There we go. Now I can hit close, and that sets up our order around our menu for us. Now I'm going to hit F5, go into the game, and actually go and have a little look at this. I said the dimensions for the actual border aren't entirely perfect on how they would want them. I'd love this, or love for this to be a bit thicker, but that's something I need to go change in a sprite for that to work. But with that done, we now need to do the tabs for our options menu, and then finally the exit button. So let's go and move into the tabs. Uh, I'm going to hide the panel for now. And now I'm going to need to go through each tab and uh, kind of set these up. So we want tab selected, hovered, unselected, and well, we don't even really need disabled. We just need these three. So I'm going to start with the unselected tabs first because I've got more of those and it just makes it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to add a style box flat this time. Stylebox flats allow you to create a customized style box in editor. So to do this, you can change the color. I'm going to use the color picker. I'm going to set the background to this background. So the same background as my actual nine patch that I set up before. Then I'm going to actually make it just a little bit darker to make it like, you know, make it so it's actually kind of visibly not selected. And then I'm going to go down. I'm going to start changing the border width, border radius, and corner radius. Now I have these uh, kind of set out for me. So in the border width, I'm going to add two in every direction other than bottom, because I like to not have this little border at the bottom here. It keeps things a bit too separate. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to border. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to use the color picker again. I'm going to select this kind of yellow here. That's part of the border. And now I'm going to go change the corner radius. And I'm going to scroll in for this so you can see this. The corner radius actually shows you how sharp these corners are. So if I go into the top right, 
you'll see that it starts blurring the line and it starts bending the corners. And I'm going to do that in the top right, top left, and in the bottom right and bottom left. Now I can go down to expand margins and I can start kind of changing these into a uh, more fittable number. So I'm just going to set the uh, expand margins here on the bottom to one, so it overlaps a little bit better with the uh, border. Now I'm going to go change the content margins to something that I kind of figured out in the past, which is six, five, six, four. Once again, this really depends on how you set up your menu, but I kind of like the look of this. It's starting to look a bit better. It actually looks a bit more stylized. Now I'm going to copy the style, uh, style box flat here. I'm going to hit copy, and then I'm going to paste it inside of the selected and hovered. Now for selected, I'm going to just make this a boatload brighter. And then for hovered, I'm going to pick a kind of in-between color, uh, right about here will do. So now if I go into the game, and I go to options, I can hover over these, they have hovers, there we go, they have selected, that's now a bit more stylized, it looks a little bit better, and now we need to finally just set up the exit button. So to do that, we're going to go into the options menu again, and you'll notice that we, uh, the new style is already applied here in the options menu as well, which is kind of why I said we do the options or the exit button last. And that is because I can now go down into the styles, the normal, I can add a new flat texture. I can now change the color to this. This way I can just get my colors a little bit easier. I can add a border to this of, let's just do four, 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 four. Let's go change that border color once again to this yellow. And then add a corner radius of, we'll do, let's do three, three, three. Now, once again, this really depends on how you want it to look yourself. This is just kind of how you can use those options in a uh, different way. Now, if I go back into my styles and I fold this texture back up, I'm going to do the same thing where I copy and I paste and I paste. There we go. That way, these are now pasted. The pressed one you technically don't need because you won't actually see the pressed one because as soon as you click the button, it disappears, right? But we want hover. So on hover, I'm just going to make this a little bit brighter. Then I'm going to click F5, I'm going to go in. If you really want to make sure that this color matches like the highlighted or select color, you can just go up here and do that. Basically use the eyedropper tool as much as you want to. And that is our options menu. This actually finishes off the stylization process for our options menu, making it uh, input friendly. And pretty much everything, this is our options menu uh, finished. Now you can go through and you can change the fonts, which are quite simple. You will go and hover over your labels that you're using, where you've got your text options, and then you can just scroll down, change your font to whatever font you want to. You can also add uh, style textures to different labels, to buttons like we have kind of done with this. It's all up to you to kind of experiment within your own game to figure out what actually suits your needs. Now with our options menu done, I will be seeing you in the next video.